Hello everyone, we hope you're all doing very well. We're very slowly working our way through your viewer requested questions and we move on to one I've been avoiding for a while, but I think we need to get it done. From Raider1 underscore 50th, FA 18 c climb mode on F-Pass. This is quite an interesting one. Hi Cap, just a little suggestion. It would be nice and very useful if you at GR, you could post an FA 18 detailed tutorial on YouTube explaining how to probably use the climb mode on the F-Pass page of the Hornet. I mean, how to use climb proposed speed to spend lesser quantity of fuel to travel to quite a far away point on the map. It does not seem to be obvious. Agreed. Um, should we use the full mill power or post combustion afterburner and reach the R speed correcting the angle of climb or something else more variable with the throttle this will probably require some extensive tests like those you have usually do very well and professionally <laughs> well, i believe that mastering the parameters of the procedures necessary to be able to make long transit in the hornet with fuel consumption managed as well as possible is an important skill to acquire as soon as possible to succeed in beautiful realistic missions what do you think of it well i don't think gr do very beautiful or realistic missions but i get the point so f pass pages here i mean i'm sure you've all looked at it before in the hornet it tells you how efficiently you're flying and how efficiently you could be flying in various ways of measuring efficiency time or uh, fuel range or whatever it also tells you how to most efficiently climb however um how we use that data we don't actually know so it's a fair comment if you click this button down here uh if i can maybe find it oh there we go look there's the speedo that's our current speed cas i believe and if you press the climb button it tells you this that is your optimum climb speed as decided by the hornet based on parameters of your current plane my understanding is it's the calculation that gets that 481 there is not very complex i think it's probably very very simple i don't think it's very dynamic i think it looks at the weight of your aircraft and that's pretty much it um we've been testing this this figure here changes when we change our plane if we change the pitch of our plane change the fuel in our plane and the only thing we can get to make a difference to actually change this is the current stores of your plane possibly fuel loading we're not totally sure yet so if you've got lots of stores on this goes uh, down if you've got a very lightweight plane this goes up i haven't tested it amazingly thoroughly but that's the only thing we can see that actually changes that and what our friend is asking is okay that's the speed there but a how do we get to that speed do we get to that speed with afterburner do we get to that speed with mill power and what i think more importantly what pitch are we supposed to climb at because if we climbed in the extreme vertically straight up, we would have to go full afterburner to maintain that speed. If we were going at five degrees pitch, then we would have to use almost no power at all. So we split it into those two things. What power do we get to get to that speed? And once we're at that speed, we're at on speed. We just need to maintain that speed. More importantly, what pitch do we climb at on speed to get to our desired altitude? Well, there's no information in the flight manual. We're in the flight manual here. Optimum, when the climb box is boxed at push button 20, the optimal climb airspeed is displayed above the air box on the HUD. So it doesn't tell us anything. It doesn't say climb at two degrees, five degrees, 15 degrees, 20 degrees. So the first part of this test, I think, is not relevant. The first pass that um, the chap was talking about, what engine power do you use to get to on speed? Because a tiny amount of time it takes to get from your current speed, say, I don't know, 400 knots, to on speed, uh, so in this case 481 knots, it's so small, it doesn't matter, you know, it's going to take three, four seconds to get up to that speed there. And once you're on speed, then you no longer have control of your throttle. You will have to use whatever throttle you need to stay on speed, or even better, use the auto thrust button, auto throttle button. And, uh, and it will do it for you. So that's not something we're really interested in. It's just not important. What is important is the pitch. We need to find out if we're going to fly on speed here, is it best to travel at low pitch or high pitch? If it's low pitch, you won't need much throttle or to keep on speed. If you're high pitch, you will need lots of throttle to keep on speed. Which is the most efficient? And this is something that's been occupying my mind for a long time. You know, I do, most of you don't watch them, but I do quite very thorough, very range tests on various aircraft. And that includes climb to altitude from, um, you know, pretty much static on the runway, climbing to crew, optimal cruise of 30 odd thousand feet. And I still can't work out what angle is the best to climb out and what speed is the best to climb at. So this is going to help answer this, at least in terms of the angle. That's all the theory I can think of going through at the moment. Let's go and um, get in the planes so and we'll explain a little bit further of the test that we're going to do. Okay, we're in now. First thing I just want to show you, because I might as well, is just quickly the F-Pass climb speed 
that is going to get annoying. F pass climb speed, which is 484 at the moment, will change if I make myself lighter. If I jettison my stores, which I'm going to do now, there we go. I'm going to ask for climb again. Then it's now 493 relative to this altitude. So this is the first thing I wanted to show. Right, next I'm going to, um, we'll respawn and we'll talk about the test. Myself and RC have identical planes. We're very heavily loaded and lots of drag. What we want to do is really metastasize the results from this test. We're going to climb identically in that we're going to climb from our current altitude, which we're going to make 1,000 feet and 300 knots. So 1,000 feet, 300 knots RC. And we're going to climb according to our F pass climb speed, climb indicator. We're going to get on speed, basically. And we're going to climb to the optimal F pass uh, distance altitude, which is going to be about 34,000, 34K. Uh, for this test here. I'm going to, the variable here, so everything's identical, but the variable is going to be the pitch. How do we use this speed that we're being given? I'm going to go up at 10 degrees, so it's a, just a very leisurely pitch. You, RC, are going to go up 40 degrees, so you've got a very steep pitch. So you'll have to use much more throttle than I have to do to keep on speed. And to measure how much throttle we're going to uh, how much fuel sorry we're going to be using to see who's most efficient the we've both got full fuel at the moment as soon as you start your pull uh, take a write down what your fuel level is at that moment and then as soon as you reach 34,000, again just note your fuel down again and then we'll discuss the results okay so you um do your own test basically i'm just going to start setting myself up we're heavy planes at the moment so we're going to have a lot of alpha so hey my yeah, current, I'm ready to go my current fuel is uh wait a minute uh, 10710 and cap is almost 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 and okay i'm going i'm going to get up to speed how you get up to speed is really up to you i don't think it's going to make a vast amount of difference if you can stay off burner but if you have to use burner okay caps at 10 degrees pitch now um i'm deciding the pitch by putting the path vector path marker in that pitch looks like i'm gonna have to use a lot of throttle i wonder if you can even get that speed actually rc nope <sighs> yep no nope. Okay, I'm just seeing if I can do it at 10 degrees uh, and that will help us decide. No, I'm going to stall. I yeah. can't get that speed, that angle. Roger. Obviously, you can see this value comes down because it's related to altitude. This is IAS or whatever. Okay, I can do it. So we're just going to rerun the test, RC. I'm going to do it at 5. You're going to do it at... Um, in fact, I'll do it at 10. That's going to be the tough one. You do it at 5. Okay, I'm within 60 feet. That'll do. I'm 10 degrees. You're 5 degrees, okay? Yep. Use whatever throttle you see fit. Ideally stay off burner, but it's up to you. Right, I'm on my way at 10 degrees. I need a fair amount of throttle. I may even need burner for this. And once you've got on speed, I think you can press the T key to hold it there, RC. Remember, it's Angels 34 we're looking for. It's going to take a while for you. Yeah, it's going to be a while. I'm actually, I uh, think I'm on afterburner here. I think I just, I need afterburner for this. Uh, so be it, that's part of the test. It's been so heavily loaded, okay. I'm on speed and I've gone throttle. Okay, ATC isn't working for some reason, not sure why. It is the T key, isn't it? It's working for me. Uh, yeah. Come on, it's probably uh, it's such high pitch. And my ATC is adjusting to my climb speed. Unlikely, I'll see. They'll diverge at some point, I imagine. Uh, you're right, they did. It's Never just mind. because that uh, the, the climb speed will always go down as you get higher because it's barometric. It's pressure dependent, obviously. Okay, my, my auto thingy won't work. I'm just going to do it manually. It's just quite easy to do, actually. Just pop in on that burner. Chasing that number, RC. I'm chasing that number. I suppose in reality, um, you wouldn't actually go up. Uh, uh, some guy, a pilot, told me about this. You wouldn't actually go up in, in a static pitch like this all the way. You would vary your pitch depending on your altitude. Um, and I can't remember which way around it is. I think you go steeper, lower down and less steep higher up for maximum fuel efficiency. However, you know, that's past, past my pay grade at that point. I don't really understand it. Okay, I can't actually keep up. Oh, yes, I can. It's all good. I have to go full chaff, full chaff now to keep up with it. I'm at 24,000. How high are you? Just through, passing through 13.5. I'm halfway there. Okay, so I've done this. Pretty much afterburner all the way, more or less. Let's go and have a look. Yeah, I've had to burn all the way, so it's a great example. Do you know if you're on... What percentage power are you on? I'm about... 90... 
six percent. So you're not burning, so that's a good difference then oh. that we're trying. I'm going to get there quicker, obviously. But I'm going to be able to go farther. Another interesting thing is that it's not just about the altitude. Oh, hang on, I'm just about to hit 34,000. Okay, I hit 34,000. Off the gas, 8980. Don't forget to check yours. 8980. Just another thing that, um, out of interest is not just about getting to altitude. It's also about the distance you... This is what I've got when I'm doing my ferry videos. It's also about the distance you travel while doing the climb. So, at 10 degrees, I'm going to travel more or less half the distance that RC is travelling. So, it's, God, how do you explain that? It's so hard to explain. So, miles per gallon. So, although we're going to talk about absolute fuel burn here to get to an altitude, in terms of miles per gallon, how many miles I've moved forwards um, is, is going to be something completely different. Um, I'm going to be much less efficient. Uh, but this uh, this video is purely about climb. We're only only interested in climb. Lateral movement, we're just going to forget about because otherwise it gets super complicated. Hey, RC, I'm done. I'm going to come and watch you now. I might as well just bail out, to be honest. Yep. Yeah, you're um, pretty much milled power, RC. Nice work. I'm way back on power right now. Your on speed is 350, is it? 357 and dropping. You know what would be interesting to compare? Uh, what speed I was doing at this altitude and what speed you're doing at this altitude and see if they're the same That yeah. tells us how intelligent this figure is because we just don't know how intelligent this figure is We've got no idea, you know, it doesn't say anything in the manual. What inputs does it has? What calculations does it make? No idea. Oh, there's my body. If you look back, go look at my body. It's funny It's a uh, contrail Oh, yeah, <laughs> I'm just flying along happily. That's so hilarious. Hey, I'll see right uh, to come off the gas and tell me the gas amount Almost there 300 feet. Oh, my, um, I've got a, I've got 8640. 8640. Let me just go and get the calculator. Stand by. So the results are I burnt 1730 pounds of fuel at 10 degrees, bouncing in and out of burner, basically. RC did 5 degrees pitch and he burnt more fuel getting to the same altitude, 34,000. He burnt 2,060 pounds. Generally, what we're saying here is more or less the maximum pitch that you can maintain that F pass climb on speed figure at will give you the most optimum fuel burn or fuel amount, yes, fuel burn to altitude. Now, just got to be really careful because, again, that's kind of also a bit of false info because if you're actually talking about what the guy said in the first place, which is getting from A to B, you know, a thousand miles over there, this test we've looked at today is purely getting to altitude. If we're looking at physically getting from that side of the map to that side of the map, it turns out that our C's was actually more efficient because although it took him more poundage of gas to get to 34,000 feet which is our optimal cruising in, in this case he covered like three times as much two and a half times as much distance so RC wins in terms of lateral I win in terms of getting up to altitude so it depends what your mission is is your mission to get up to altitude to fend off baddies or is your mission to cover more lateral ground if your requirement is to get up to out purely to get to altitude as efficiently as possible then you go as high a pitch as you can pretty much to maintain that F pass on speed if your job is to go as far as possible and get up to altitude, then you want to pretty much do as low a pitch as you can with that F pass on speed, more or less. I have no idea why what the physics are behind that. If any of you guys know drag, weight and whatnot, why that might be a thing, then um, let me know. And anything else you can help to kind of refine this a bit, because this is a bit of a crude but effective test, I think. Okay, uh, we'll leave it there. I hope that was useful and spurn some comments and we'll see you later.